good afternoon, everybody, or good morning, wherever you're joining us from. Today is uh, it's all about Azure SQL Managed Instance. So I assume that everybody in here has a burning question that you want to ask our subject matter experts who we have online right now. But before we get started, I do want to let you know that this is going to be a recorded uh, session and it will be posted for on-demand viewing a little bit later on. So if you really don't want to be made famous, you're welcome to leave and catch it on demand a little bit later, or now's your opportunity. Uh, so uh, we have a, good, a lot of good content, I think, that's going to be teed up for you today. And so just welcome you to sit back and bring your best questions to us. Uh, my name is Eric Hudson. I do product marketing for Azure SQL, and I'm joined by uh, my three friends from the product group uh, who are joining us in the very wee morning hours. So really do appreciate them. Uh, coming online to join us today, we've got Borko uh, Novakovic, Mladen Anzik, and Nico Neugebauer. And you can ask these guys absolutely anything, as long as it has to do with Azure SQL Managed Instance. And we can also do some SQL migration tools as well. A couple different ways you can engage with us. If you're in person, uh, raise your hand. And I understand we have a, a floating mic, potentially. <laughs> Uh, we can take your questions. Uh, if you're joining us online, uh, go ahead and use the chat to submit your questions, and we'll answer those questions uh, verbally. And of course, you guys look like a rowdy bunch, so I'm asking you to please, please adhere to the uh, Microsoft Code of Conduct. Uh, for those who are on chat who just really want to mix it up on chat, it's posted there as well for you. Um, just behave. All right. Now, before we get started, I do want to just take uh, two slides of death by PowerPoint, uh, just to kind of level set the context for you, kind of kick off the conversation. First of all, to ask, what is Azure SQL? So beyond being a fancy sticker, which by the way, I encourage all of you to take one or five uh, on your way out the door today. Azure SQL is really a family of cloud SQL databases, and it covers a wide variety of deployment options uh, for SQL in the cloud spanning both uh, customer managed to Microsoft managed, IaaS to PaaS. Uh, we have SQL Server on Azure Virtual Machines, uh, which is best for lift and shift migrations when you need that op, uh, you know, OS level access. We have the hero for today, which is uh, Azure SQL Managed Instance, which represents kind of our best PaaS offering for modernizing existing apps. And then last but not least, we've got Azure SQL Database, which uh, is positioned best for developing net new apps in the cloud. Now, each one of these offerings is, uh, should be familiar. The reason why is that they're all built on the same SQL Server engine that we all know and love, which means you have all very familiar uh, tools, features, and functionality, ultimately providing you the flexibility to choose, how do I want to, quote unquote, do SQL uh, in the cloud? But the hero for today is Azure SQL Managed Instance. And this is really, uh, uh, you know, like it says here, best for modernizing those existing apps at scale. Uh, we've been investing in this service for a number of years now, and there's really a handful of things that uh, are kind of the hallmarks of this service, uh, not the least of which is the fact that this is a fully managed, Microsoft managed SQL instance in the cloud. It is always up to date. And what that means is that Microsoft is doing on your behalf all of the, the patches, the updates, so you don't have to deal with that. And actually a cool byproduct of that is the fact that it never goes end of support. Sometimes that can be a little bit of a hassle every few years when that happens. It's, it's a non-issue when you're on a uh, managed instance. It also pri provides maximum compatibility with the SQL Server engine. The reason why this is important is if you are considering modernizing your applications uh, onto the cloud, oftentimes some level of refactoring is a consideration. With managed instance, because of the level of compatibility we have, there's really little to no refactoring that's necessary, which makes it a relatively light lift in terms of modernizing and a, being a low cost option. I mentioned it's fully managed, so it does a lot of things on your behalf like automatic backups, uh, we have performance tuning, we have built-in AJDR, just to name a few, really to do a lot of things on your behalf so that you can focus on more important uh, aspects of your job. We're securing the data, not only at the compute level, but also at the networking level. We have native VNet support that comes as part of the package of SQL Managed Instance. 
and a relatively new-ish uh, feature that we've got, the link feature in, in uh, Managed Instance, uh, enables you to access, or enables your SQL Server anywhere to access Azure. Um, what this ultimately does is enable some pretty cool scenarios, uh, not the least of which is enabling read scale, but also online migration, uh, as well as managed DR in the cloud. And so with all of that as context, what I'd like to do now is to basically open this up, because this is a discussion session, to take your questions. We've got our experts online right now, uh, ready to answer any questions you might have. All right, we do have our first question. Uh, when will we, what are we doing about log write speeds? So maybe maybe I can take this one, Eric. Okay. Mm -hmm. Or are, are we answering immediately questions or you want to kind of um, um, collect a couple of questions and then? Yeah, so we, we have a, a first question that has come out with regards to log write speeds uh, and presumably uh, any plans on, I guess, accelerating them, although there's no context on from what and to how fast. <laughs> so maybe, yeah, I, I can provide provide some some thoughts on that one, but I also would love, love to know what decent log speed mean. Um, we are, we're working and relatively soon we are going to double the log speeds in business critical service tier, right? So soon is kind of a, a month or two from now. And then also we, we consider to increasing the, the log speed in general purpose service tier as well, right? So this is more down the road. Now uh, we're talking here about doubling the current log speeds. Uh, and yeah, maybe follow up question from, from the team would be what decent means in this context. Got it. Uh, next question in, are there any limitations? Oops, we're scrolling. We've got a lot of questions starting to come in here. Uh, are there any limitations with managed instance compared to enterprise SQL server? So I think that's probably a, a more general question on, uh, are you giving anything up if you're currently on-premises enterprise SQL server and then moving to SQL managed instance in the cloud? So maybe I can I, again t t take this one. So so both of our service tier, general purpose and 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 uh, business critical, feature wise, provide com uh, basically all all features that enterprise edition of SQL Server provides, and which which is kind of a unique to SQL managed instance. So even in general purpose service tier, with exception of you know in memory all TP, uh, all other features that exist in enterprise service tier uh, are supported in SQL MI, right? So in that regard, uh, definitely both of our service tier try to mimic what is in enterprise, and also we don't have these scaling limits that are, uh, you know, uh, applicable to standard edition. So like you know, maximum number of cores, uh, maximal uh, amount of storage, and all of that. Those are all all kind of relaxed in both service tiers, general purpose and service uh, and, and business critical. Uh, I'm not sure if that answers the question, and maybe also Nick and Laden want to want to chime in here. Uh, just to add, there are some non-feature related limitations at this moment, like 100 databases per instance, and we are working on on you know uh, increasing this this limit. So it is not related to feature, but you know some platform related limitations like that one. Okay, we do have kind of a follow-up question, Laden, to. Uh, sounds like it's a little bit more in response to what you just said about 100 databases, and that is, when will we be able to go beyond 100 databases per instance? Borko, do you want to take this one? Uh, yeah, uh, I can just say that uh, there is a work in progress. I wouldn't share the dates uh, because it's not yet available, but you know, we really hope that it's gonna be it's gonna be lifted relatively soon, right? All right. Uh, let's see here. How do we make the decision? Uh, we're, we're, we're currently, looks like they're wondering if they should migrate from on-prem SQL Server to managed instance versus Synapse dedicated SQL pool. Maybe, maybe I can. Okay, go ahead, Nico. So, so, so given that the question is focusing on the Synapse, which is a data warehousing solution, I would assume that in this case, it is about a data warehousing solution. So 
I think it's um, it will depend on the needs. If the customer needs the larger SQL Server surface, the obvious decision would be going towards the managed instance. If they need a massive scale, um, then of course, like maybe petabytes of data, managed instance currently does not provide this massive scale uh, and really fast work with petabytes of data. So in this case, probably the Synapse uh, dedicated SQL pool, if this is the, uh, the right choice, would be a better solution. Got it. Thank you, Nico. We have a lot of stuff coming in online. Any questions in the room? All right, we got a next question up. Currently, we have always on across multiple nodes for read and write in on-prem. How is this handled when we go to SQL managed instance? Uh, so high availability in Azure SQL managed instance is uh, implemented in different ways in general purpose and business critical service tier. Let me start from business critical service tier because it's very similar to always on availability groups. Uh, business critical service tier is more or less uh, availability group with four nodes. So one of them is primary and three of them are secondaries. One of secondary replicas, replicas is at the same time also readable replica. So you have all these four replicas built in in your service and you pay for it as one as one uh, uh, managed instance. In general purpose, high availability is implemented in a way more similar to fillover clusters. So Basically, there is a, uh, there are multiple com compute nodes that 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 can you know attach to the same remote storage to the same uh, data files uh, stored on on the remote storage. All maybe right. maybe I can just what uh, add one more aspect to to this uh, explanation. So the the, um, the setup that Mladen explained it's a, it's a setup within a region. Uh, it's also possible to use the uh, uh, failover groups as a, a geo, GeoDR uh, technology in SQL managed instance to replicate data between regions. It's very similar, like using always on in asynchronous mode between the regions. And then when you replicate uh, to another managed instance belonging to a different regions, you can use that replica for uh, read only workloads as well, as well, uh, in addition to the disaster recovery scenarios. Just want to complete, complete the, the explanation. And also to add one more detail, if you are not using GeoReplica for read-only workloads, but only as a standby replica, you do not need to pay for licenses for this geosecondary replica. All right. Hey, next question up. We've got a lot stacking up into the uh, the chat here. Hey, can we also um, migrate data encryption from standard SQL Server to uh, SQL Managed Instance? Things like transparent encryption, column level, symmetric. So uh, yes, all, all of these features are supported, work really well. Our customers are using them. Maybe more than you can expand, especially on uh, transparent encryption, right? Yes, depending on on what or what mechanism you use for the migrations, uh, you can benefit, you know, from from some built-in capabilities. For example, our first-party migration tool uh, can uh, can basically migrate your uh, transparent data encryption key from on-premises to. Uh, to manage the instance for you, or if you are for some reason doing a manual migration, you can uh, you can use you know REST API or, or PowerShell or CLI to also upload uh, your uh, key from uh, to, to manage the instance and then be able to restore your database uh, to manage the instance or to use manage the instance link also to to replicate your database uh, to manage the instance. All right, thank you. We got another question. Um, I'm curious, uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and ask it um, and I guess some I, clarification perhaps from the customer on how to migrate from Azure SQL database to MI for databases around one terabyte. Export to backpack, not feasible in the reasonable time. Does Microsoft propose a fully packaged service that would avoid use of backpack uh, like a custom ETL process that's based on data factory. Would it be possible to have something based on a restore of the internal backups? Mladen, do you want to take this one? 
So at this moment, yes, uh, at this moment, we do not have this exposed publicly uh, as, a, as a mechanism for, you know, like uh, any, anyone to use. However, we do provide this type of a service. Uh, so please uh, reach out using your account team and then we, we can probably arrange something. This is the current current state of the things. OK, another quick check of the room. Any questions popping up as a result of this? Have one. This will help the guys uh, hear it online Thank too. You. So I have a uh, two question. One is what are the best uh, practices for the migration? Uh, I remember there was a tool called DMA for doing the assessment before migration, and uh, I'm not sure what's the latest updates. Uh, that's first part of the question. And second is while doing the migration from on-premise to cloud, what is the uh, criteria where we can choose whether it's MI, pass, or lift and shift? Thank you. Two great questions. Okay, did you guys catch that? Yep. Yep. Okay. Uh, so, so yeah, maybe maybe I can uh, give it a try. So, regarding the, the the migration tools, so the latest the latest uh, and the greatest tool that we offer is uh, SQL Migration Extension in, in Azure Data Studio that provides the offer basically uh, uh, supports the full experience from the assessment, sizing recommendation uh, on the destination side, and also ability to migrate your databases in online or offline manner right so azure data studio with sql migration extension is is the latest tool uh, that, that could be used uh, there are some other other techniques that could be used including the managed instance link that modern explained right and it, it can come in handy with, in some scenarios but you know azure data studio is uh, definitely the 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 tool for assessment and migrations right now the second question was whether uh, you should be using uh, uh lift and shift to sql vms or sql managed uh, mig uh, migrating to sql managed instance or sql database so so basically our recommendation is wherever is possible you probably should uh, uh start with platform as a service which is either sql uh, managed instance or sql database unless your application or your business requires you to fully control the database layer including you know some low level primitives or even access to operating system or strict version of sql server like for example running on 2012 2016 or so on right but if you are uh if you are really looking to modernize your workload uh, and you you should uh, uh, look to go to platform as a service managed instance is definitely your choice because you know it offers the instance level and the uh, almost full surface area, whereas in SQL database you may be needing to do some some additional refactoring. Now, uh, if it's not migration or and you are planning to develop a completely new application, definitely thanks to elasticity and other options, SQL database might be a better option. So, I I hope this covers. The, the the full scope of the question but you know uh let us know if you if you if you need more more inputs or details good thank you thank you uh next question do we need to program to handle transient errors with sql mi i would say it depends on how resilient your application is to to this tra transient you know uh, errors or let's say failovers that take uh, a single digit number of seconds per, per failover in managed instance if your application is re resilient of course not uh, uh if it is not resilient yes it is it is it is recommended uh otherwise yes you would you would uh, you know like experience uh experience this these failovers during the regular upgrades that happen on the on the, on, the, on our service so maybe I can just expand a little bit on, on what Mladen said, like uh, programming in many of the cases actually means uh, configuring your driver that you're using, like installing the, the drives that support SQL managed instance and then programming the number of retries and, and the uh, retry timeout will actually be sufficient in many cases to survive these transient errors, as opposed to actually going and changing the code really. Uh, so it, it's mainly configuration of the driver and connection strings, right? And by the way, the latest version of the drivers also serves as a help uh, for the for handling the transient errors to when connecting to Azure Pass services. All right. Uh, next question up: What is the best way or tools you can use to manage all of our clients' Azure SQL tenants, some of which are 501c3s, nonprofit? 
uh, and get uh, Microsoft credit or Azure credits without having the clients adding us to their tenant? Uh, that's a tough one. I, I think it it goes beyond beyond the scope of what we can ex explain yeah. uh, at at this time, unfortunately. But yeah, it's uh, yeah uh, a, a, a really interesting interesting question, and I, I would I would encourage encourage the person to to try to reach out to us. Uh, there will be a link at the end of the session how how they how the, the mm -hmm. person can reach out. Yep, and can follow up. Yep. All right. Any questions within the room? Yep. Thank you. Uh, I just wanted to start uh, great work on that November uh, wave 2022 uh, release. Uh, fantastic work on that. Uh, my question is specific on the zone redundancy. My understanding it's still in preview in the business critical uh, tier. So in terms of the product uh, roadmap, are there any plans to bring it uh, to the general purpose uh, uh, configuration of the uh, SQL MI? So the short answer is yes. Stay tuned. Uh, like that, like you can expect business critical going to GA and then introducing the, the preview for general purpose uh, relatively soon. So stay tuned. Yeah, this is this is in, in the works. All right, we have uh, another question online. Uh, we are currently using VMs and SQL instances. Um, and tried to use Azure SQL, but the costs increased, decided to use VMs with instances all of which is still part of Azure SQL. Uh, are there some good practices or guides to migrate VMs? I think we may need perhaps a little bit more uh, detail around that one. Are we migrating from on-premises to VMs? Or are we looking to migrate from VMs to a fully managed um, offering? All right, uh, let's see. We've got another question here around um, Polybase. Uh, for those used to seeing that on SQL Server, is Polybase going to come to SQL Managed Instance? But I I can take this question probably. So I would say that um, Polybase does not have to come to Managed Instance. It's already there. We already um, last September we announced the general availability for possibility of customers uh, reading the data from Parquet, CSV, or JSON files stored on the ADLS or Azure Data Lake storage or Azure Blob storage. Customers can use the open role set commands or even mapping a PSQL table right to their. Um, Parquet, JSON, or CSV files. And just last week, we announced a, a general availability for the writing or exporting functionality on managed instance. So customers can write into a T-SQL table and store the data, potentially expanding well beyond the established 16 terabytes maximum of storage. So. Customers are able to read and write to um, to these formats, uh, and that's kind of like our solution for for the polybase. And the same functionalities are available new uh, newly on the SQL Server 2022. Nico, to be completely uh, uh, correct, there are also other other functionalities of Polybase, like, uh, you know, querying the data, residing in other uh, databases like Oracle and other similar data sources, that's still not available in managed instance. So basically you covered the part of the scope, which is already available in, in GA capacity. Uh, there, there, is a, there is a delta that is still not supported. And, you know, it's, it's something that we as a product group uh, seriously consider. Great, thank Just you. Yeah, you go on board. No, 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 no. That's that. That was all. Okay. Uh, we have another one. This is uh, with regards to looks like the link feature that I, I briefly mentioned earlier. Um, is it possible to replicate multiple databases into a single managed instance? Uh, using my link, using managed instance link feature. Yes, yes, it is possible. So you can do any kind of consolidation of databases from multiple uh, SQL servers to, to a single managed instance or vice versa. You can 
you can have multiple databases on your SQL server and then uh, replicate each of them to different to different managed instances like all of that works. Uh, there is one limitation at this moment that that we consider to to, to improve in, in the future releases, which is if you have multiple databases under the same availability group at this moment on premises, you cannot you cannot replicate your know, particular databases using MLink. Uh, other than that, like all all the combinations of 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 uh, replicating multiple databases to same or multiple managed instances work with managed instance uh, with managed instance link. Sorry. Great, thank you, Vladi. Any questions in the room? Yes, we got one way over there. Hi there, how's it going? Um, so we're looking to do uh, have a Azure DR site, and what would your recommendation be versus uh, VM versus managed instance in getting like a consistent replication over from an on an on-prem data center? So your, uh, I'm assuming that your primary remains. Uh, on premises, and then the, the mm -hmm. question is whether DR part uh, would we recommend uh, VM or managed instance, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah, yeah, yes. So I think I think uh, the criteria for choosing VM or managed instance is more or less the same as what Borg could explained previously for for even migrating your primary workload. Uh, meaning that you know, like, do you do you have like any of the remaining features that still do not exist on managed instance on your primary SQL Server? For example, file stream, file table, something like that. Uh, uh, that would be you know, like that that, that would if, if you do have some some of, of, of such a features, you would you would choose uh, Azure VM for sure. Now, uh, in all other cases. I think it boils down to uh, whether you still want to manage your geosecondary on Azure VM or you want, want, want to let uh, Azure SQL platform to manage it for you. So, you know, for like fully, fully managed DR, like worry free, I would I would recommend managed instance if there are no limitations like file stream, file table I, I mentioned previously. Uh, important to say, uh, disaster recovery scenario with managed instance link uh, in managed instance is at this moment still in a sign up based uh, public preview. So at this moment, we do not support you know uh, production workloads yet. It will mm -hmm. it will change uh, uh, it will change soon. Okay, perfect. Thank you. All right, thank you, Mladen. Uh, next question upcoming. Uh, from our folks online, is merge and peer-to-peer -peer replication coming to MI or managed instance sometime? So, uh, yeah, I, I have this like appropriate answer written on my palm. So it says it's under consideration for the future releases. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Way to hold the line. <laughs> uh, next question coming up online, um, is point in time recovery on the roadmap? Uh, Particular, uh, you can see the uh, commands there: stop at, stop at marks, stop before mark. You know I, I, I guess know? this is this has something to do with uh, restoring backups mm -hmm. at specific, yeah. at specific, right? So, so um, SQL managed instance as well as SQL database provides kind of a pacified version of this experience. So, in which you just specify point in time to which you want service to restore database to, right? So basically, it's exact uh, snapshot uh, in time, uh, and then and then in the backend we do apply all the logic to basically give you uh, that point in time for your database, right? So we do not open uh, this level of control when we when we actually uh, offer the point in time recovery, right? Uh, not sure if that answers fully the question, but yeah. All right, thank you. All right, we have about 10 minutes or so before we start wrapping up. Uh, it's been a, a very active uh, chat, a lot of great questions coming in. Um, and it looks like we just got another one and we got a couple more. All right, any others in the room before we take on the, yes, oh, we got two. Is there a method to um, share the costs of multiple database like uh, showback? Costs of multiple databases within uh, SQL MI. So we create, we we migrate from multiple on-prem databases to a managed instance, but we still want to show back the cost of each individual database. Is there any tools or any any support for that? 
Unfortunately, we do not uh, offer an, uh, uh, a built-in way for you to kind of split the cost between multiple databases using the same instance. Uh, you could you could uh, kind of uh, calculate that based on the CPU consumption for each database, but that's something that you know you should be using the DMVs or some other monitoring tools to this basically calculate how much of the CPU hours every database was using uh, from that managed instance because the CPU is the main main contributor to the overall overall cost of running SQL Um uh, It's an interesting idea. Idea. It's not the first time that we heard of, right? So I think that's something we, we could kind of uh, consider to to add to the product. Yeah. And our next question. Yeah, I, this goes back to the DR question. I think I heard you say that if you have a SQL managed instance or two SQL managed instances in different regions for DR purposes, one of them was read only. You don't have to pay for licensing for that second one. Is that what I heard? If the second one is not used for a read only workload, but only as a standby uh, right. a replica, then you do not have to pay uh, for the license for this secondary instance. Gotcha. Thank you. All right. We have a question regarding the start stop feature in managed instance. Uh, I had an issue previously where uh, start stop required SQL managed instance contributor at subscription level if it wasn't already allowed. Is there any chance where we can grant this at the resource group or resource level permission instead of the subscription? Uh, I would just say thanks for the feedback. <laughs> Thanks for the feedback. We will definitely consider this. Obviously, this is uh, the current the current state is probably it might may be a, a a friction to to using the feature, right? So uh, I cannot answer the question because uh, most likely we will need to uh, invest additional work to to make this change. And I will add at the end of this, we have a resource slide uh, with a one of the resources. There is a link to a form where you can provide feedback input ideas uh, to the team and and they just gobble them up. These guys are going to stay up even later than they are right now reading all the feedback. So uh, next question coming in online. Are the DBA tasks like rebuild, index, update, um, statics, statistics perhaps, uh, automatic or are they still done by DBAs? Nico, isn't this your favorite one? No. <laughs> <laughs> So at least uh, I would say that we are not taking the bread and butter from the DBAs. Uh, I would say it's uh, it's still the best proof uh, that the, the DBAs know their business and their business needs. So these are the tasks that the DBAs will still need to do. And there are so many solutions that they can just simply transfer from their on-prem or from their Azure SQL VMs into managed instance. All right. So, yeah, yep. yeah, maybe just to be completely clear, uh, regarding this task that that were mentioned in this question, like rebuilding index, updating statistics, especially rebuilding indexes, that's still on on the on the one of the tasks that DBA should be doing on MI, right? Doesn't doesn't need, yeah, uh, some something that definitely we can consider for the future, but still on the DBA list of tasks. All right, we've got about five minutes left before we start winding this down. Any questions uh, in the room? Any more questions online? Question, does this support snapshots? Do we need any more information on that? Any more context? OK. Yeah, because what this means is unclear. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> All right, I'll ask it. Uh, when, when is GPT-4 coming to MI? <laughs> so, you know, like there is copilot this, copilot that, of course, that there will be some kind of uh, you know, error SQL copilot, stay tuned. 
Yeah, that's actually a, a pretty fair fair response. Um, something that's as big as this uh, within Microsoft, you're likely going to find it at your neighborhood store, meaning your your the service is going to just kind of permeate. So, more 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 likely just a matter of time. Okay, another question came in for SQL DB. Microsoft suggests not to bother with index maintenance as storage performance for random reads is similar to sequential. Is it similar for a managed instance? So I, I would love to see um, the exact um, page uh, of where Microsoft recommends to avoid um, um, with index maintenance because it's a, such a complicated measure uh matter uh, and uh, i mean customer will have to guarantee the statistics maintenance in any case because otherwise the plans will be badly wrong so i would say when when you are able to confirm that your application does not need any um any index reveals at all if you're using something like column store indexes and you are dealing largely with you know um logical fragmentation and not physical fragmentation, then yeah, maybe it will work for you. But I, I'm, I do not remember ever Microsoft putting anything in, similar in the documentation. Got it. Okay, getting back to the snapshot question, looks like we got a little bit more context. They use snapshot in on-premises SQL Server after their shift every day for static data for reporting. So how would you handle something like that in managed instance? I, I, I think uh, this question actually uh, is related to using the database snapshots on premises, uh, typically used for reporting. So uh, uh, in business critical ser service tier, there is always one read-only replica available for uh, read-only work workloads, and it can be used for scenarios like this. Uh, in, in general purpose service tier, uh, and, and also for business critical, in addition to the read-only replica, we uh, support uh, as as of recently features like database copy, right? So you can you can initiate creating database copy, and then you can use that database copy to uh, seed seed your reporting, right? Uh, the fastest way is using the read-only replica in business critical because is you know it's it's always in sync with the with the primary primary replica. All right, thank you, Borco. Uh, another question came in from chat. Does managed instance support linked server? Oh, and it looks like we got an answer from Nico already. Yes, linked server to other SQL server-based sources are supported. Thank you for uh, responding, Nico. Spoke on your behalf. All right, we've got uh, about enough time for one more question, and we'll start wrapping up. Anybody want to grab that? All right. Well, we will hang on for at least five, the five more minutes that we've got, but we did want to thank you for taking a chunk of your afternoon and spending it here with us. Um, I mentioned earlier that we have a form uh, that you can use, uh, aka.ms contact SQL MI. Uh, that will lead you, basically, it's a conduit directly to these guys. And so uh, let them know what you think. If you have any ideas, comments, complaints, recipes, they take it all. Uh, and then also we've got some additional info uh, we can point you to as well. Just basic product information on SQL Managed Instance, as well as if you're interested in just kind of uh, trying it out, we've got a quick start guide that you can very easily access and give it a try. Uh, and as always, the feedback is very important to us. So we invite you to try or go to AKMS uh, Microsoft Build Evals to complete your session evaluations. And let us know what you think. Always looking for different ways to improve uh, on these formats going forward. So we'd love to hear your thoughts. Uh, with that, we'll hang on for uh, another four minutes while we've got it. Um, happy to take any additional questions or please take one or five stickers. <laughs> Thank you, guys.